Hello, this is Mike Lively from Northern Kentucky University, and today we're going to do a synopsis of Chapter 2 of my book in Paper Vision. And I just want to let you know right away where the demos and code downloads are. We're going to do two demos, a tree demo, a second life a imitation tree, and a curved plane demo. We're going to play a video on that. So uh, you can look at the demos at uh, www.nkuflc.org forward slash sltree or www.nkuflc.org forward slash curved video. And you can download both of those code examples from my cookbook one downloads for its last list. So go ahead and go there, grab that code, and I'll show it to you on Google Code real quick here. Uh, the first one is secondlife3.zip, and the other is curvedvideo.zip. Go ahead and download those and use them however you want. Uh, they're free for you to use. Okay, now let's go ahead and start the synopsis of the book. Now, chapter two is called Resin Primitives. So I borrow that term from Second Life. In Second Life, to put a primitive on the stage is to res it. And the first thing we do in the book is look at the primitives that are available in paper vision a plane, a cube, a cylinder, a cone, and a particle field. And then we talk about adding materials to prims, and uh, we go right to the source code and we ask, well, what kind of materials are those? And we go through the generic list, the wireframe list, and the color list. And then we actually give the code snippets to put materials on different primitives for color materials, wireframe materials, movie materials, movie asset materials, uh, materials list, bitmap, file materials, bitmap, asset materials, bitmap, color materials, bitmap, viewport materials, bitmap, wireframe materials, video stray materials, and that's a lot of fun. Now, so let me just say I myself am actually going back and looking at some of these code snippets as I build my own book. So it's a great reference book and it's also one that digs down into the material because the next thing we show you is how to create a material class yourself. So we're not just giving you a laundry list of how to do things, we're actually showing you uh, how to create things from the classes themselves. So we dig down into the class and we build a nice material and I'll show that to you right now, the one you saw at the beginning of the uh, video, here it is. And it's basically a color and wireframe combined, so if I click on that we see that it turns into the color and click back and it turns into a wireframe. And so we show you how to do that in the book. We also distribute that code with the book as well. After that, we show you how to add interactivity. We give a couple of simple examples to show you how to do the color wireframe examples you just saw. We do a URL queue when you click on different sizes, you go to a different URL. And we show how to swap materials at runtime. And then we go into how a prim is constructed. We dig right again back into the code. We talk about triangulation, we talk about texture mapping. And the next thing we do is creating new prims for paper vision. Uh, in order to do a second life uh, version using paper vision, you've got to have all the, all the primitives. And uh, paper vision is missing a few, so I actually add them and I show you how to create those prims in the book. We do a polyplane, a triangle, a tree, a pyramid, tube, half sphere, torus, geodesic, a curved plane, a pucked cube or puckered cube a carousel, an image ball, and a sky box. And let me go ahead and show you a few examples just for this video. Here's an example of a tree somewhat like Second Life. So let me click on that and bring that up real quick. And I am distributing all this code with this video on YouTube. So uh, go ahead and grab this and feel free to use it. And so Second Life actually, the way it creates trees, actually puts them on cross planes. And so I didn't want to get into a situation where I'm actually putting two planes on stage and then putting two images and then I'm worrying about Z-buffering or layering problem. So what I did is I just put, I created my own primitive that was a cross plane. Let me show that primitive to you real quick. Then I set these images in, and I kind of spin them around a little slow, and it, it looks a little cheesy, but you know what? It works, and you put a bin modifier on there, and a little blurring, it's going to look just like a tree, or a good pro approximation, and save you a lot of primitives when you're trying to stick something like this on stage. Once again, this is available uh, online. Let me go ahead and, and uh, show this to you, uh, as far as what the primitive looks like in uh, Flex. Okay, here's that primitive that I stuck those trees on. Now, let me tell you, this is not two planes intersecting. This is one single primitive that's created as a base prim inside of uh, paper vision. And you just, uh, in a sense, instantiate it. And then you put your, uh, um, you create a two part material list and then you throw the materials on these planes. And uh, let's take a look at the curved plane. Curved planes are a lot of fun, uh, uh, especially when you want to put video on them. So let's show you this curved plane real quick here. Simulated. And you can see this is basically just a curved plane with a video on it. And as it spins, you can see there it is. Um, and it's just real simple to do. Let me go ahead and once again bring that curved plane up, the primitive that I created, and show it to you. And we'll actually go through step by step on how that was created. 
So what we're looking at right now is the actual curved prim with the material that I created. You can see if you click on it, it's this plain material, and click and you got the wireframe back. And uh, what I want to do is actually show you how this was created. So we're going to bring the book over, let you see the, some of the chapters, and at least see a portion of the chapter, and uh, actually go through this step by step. And this is pretty much how the book is laid out. Uh, we're going to tell you, hey, first of all, let's go right down to the primitives. Let's take a look at the plane primitive, and let's look at the code that creates the vertices. And so let's actually do that. I'm going to actually bring up Flex. We'll take a look at the uh, code and talk a little bit about it. So we're in Flex Builder right now, and let's go ahead and navigate to the appropriate primitive. So I'm hit org, paper vision, go to uh, objects, and primitives. And there's a few other primitives, a number I've added now, but uh, let's take a look at the plain primitive real quick here. Double click on that, and let's look at the code. Open this up a little bit. So you have the import statements and uh, all the uh, uh, properties, and as you move down here, you have the constructor function. And just a little bit below that, you're actually creating your, uh, you have a build plane. And these uh, primitives are always uh, exactly the same way. They have two parts. They have a place, a part that creates the vertices, and they have a part that creates the UV skin that maps onto the vertices, or the uh, little faces that are created by the vertice triangles. And right here, you can take a look, and here's the code f that creates the vertices for the actual plane. And you can see it's going just basically an iteration over X and Y. And z is equal to zero. Now, if you want to pucker this plane out, you're going to have to change the z value. So, in order to create a curved plane, is it as simple as just basically putting a little uh, para parabolic function in there that curves the plane out and, and, and increases z just by a little bit of a nudge? So, that's exactly what I did in this particular uh, example. I came along here and I uh, went, okay, well, here's my zero here. Let's change that zero to some number. I have a simple little parabolic equation, x times x. And so, as x increases, uh, basically, the, par the par parabola increases as well. And then I created a curvature number. With actually, you can change the curvature. You can make your plane flatter or curve out more, depending on what you want to do. And then I just basically put that z value into the uh, vertex number. And now I have a bulge in my plane as I change x. Okay. Now, one more thing I want to work with, of course, is this uh, my curvature number, because I want that to be changed dynamically. So what I did is I came along here, and I did a little bit of work on the uh, constructor function actually added a little uh, curvature number here and then uh, I, I actually uh, brought that in and declared it and when I created my function my little code snippet to run it I imported the curvature plane and then I uh, declared my curved plane and then I uh, basically have this new parameter right here curvature and I can actually change that and dynamically change the curvature of that plane so a pretty cool um, and uh, really exciting to, to work with this. It's a lot of fun. So uh, I hope you enjoy that code. You can get it all from the web. And uh, that's pretty much how it was built. So let me go back to the rest of the book, and we'll finish the synopsis. And then finally, what we want to do, we want to put it all together. And so we're building a, a throughout the book, kind of a, what I call Paper Max. It's a kind of a clone of 3ds Max, but for the web. And we build the, uh, the initial interface. We show you how to res objects from that and how to change materials just once again just super fun to do so hope you enjoy the book uh, i am certainly enjoying writing it and i'm actually rereading it as i write it when i need something myself i'm referring to my own book which means it's probably going to be a good book well at least for me so you'll have to buy it to find out but definitely download these code pieces they're used to use they're yours to use for whatever you want